Good morning to all of you. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar session. So I am uh, Karthikeyan Sadrugunan, working as a business development manager for Frontier Laboratories and based in Singapore to support Frontier Laboratories business in Southeast Asia and India. Okay, so during today's session, just for the benefit of some of the audience who are actually for failure analysis and reverse engineering. Okay, just want to, uh, I just want to uh, spend a couple of minutes to introduce uh, Frontier Laboratories briefly. Frontier Laboratories Limited is a, is a Japanese organization founded in 1991. We are into our 30th year anniversary. This was founded by Dr. Chuichi Watanabe and we have 50 over employees doing the R&D work, manufacturing and QC. So we have a BD office all over the country and we have a very good market share in this uh, analytical system. So our uh, win win uh, uh, principle is actually based on the technology innovation, then customer satisfaction, then our partnership. As you know, uh, the PY system is not a standalone system, so which you will learn later. So we have a potential partners who are our uh, the GC, GCMS manufacturers and we also rely upon the employee strength. So this is our kind of uh, uh, motion to uh, have success in our organization. So let us get started with a brief introduction on pyrolysis. So pyrolysis is actually a, a thermal process okay, to decompose uh, uh, the organic material at elevated temperature in the absence of oxygen. So this process is a kind of endothermic. And so during this process, it involves like, changes in chemical composition and, and physical phase. Okay? And this is actually irreversible. That means you cannot bring back to the original state of the material when you cool down or anything. So the process is irreversible. Pyrolysis is a Greek word. Okay? Pyro means fire. And lysis means separate. So basically, we are trying to separate chemicals through thermal cracking. So this thermal cracking is something actually, sometimes it's uncontrollable because the temperature and the nature of material, it differs. But in analytical chemistry, how we can uh, tackle these challenges is what we'll be learning later. So let us just try to compare the process combustion and pyrolysis. Okay, combustion basically again you apply heat energy, but in presence of air or oxygen. So mostly it may end up a complete mineralization. That means every organic matter can get formed that the carbon dioxide, but there may be some char or residue. On the other hand, if it is a pyrolysis process that is occurring in the absence of air and oxygen, so you can end up getting a different products okay that can be char bio oil or sin gas okay the next slide shows a little more so that bio the biomass research community or the waste to energy community is using pyrolysis as a process to produce a bio oil or different a kind of char related material that can be used for activated carbon or tires or soil additive similarly the sink gas they actually try to improvise the product value through some catalytic pyrolysis. So we have another system that can really even help to study this pyrolytic or catalytic pyrolytic process. But today we will not be talking about that. So today focus is analytical pyrolysis. So these two slides basically just to give some kind of uh, uh, idea what is pyrolysis. So pyrolysis is a thermal treatment. Okay. So where you are able to break down the large molecule into small molecule. And this is happening in the absence of oxygen. So that are the two key uh, messages or at least information one should understand. Okay, now how this pyrolysis can be used in uh, analytical chemistry. Okay, so the interest why we need to use it. This is basically to characterize some of the materials that are large molecules and they do not have proper value, volatility or solubility. Okay, 
So they use the pyrolysis process to characterize material. So as I said before, even this can be used for optimizing a pyrolysis or catalytic pyrolysis process, which we will talk about uh, it in, in an, another webinar. This figure, just a kind of small illustration. So when you have a polymer or any biomass, when you apply some heat energy and you have a, a inert gas like helium, then in our outlet, whatever the gases or the volatiles that are released from the material will be going out, which we can connect to any of the analytical equipment like FTIR or MS and GCMS. So depending upon your type of instrument, this can give a different sort of information that can be used for your material characterization, also the, the choice of materials application. So here two important things is one is your heating process should be done in a controlled manner. And secondly, it should be done in an inert gas atmosphere, the inert atmosphere. Then the, the other side as an outlet or the back end, you will have your appropriate detector so that you can collect the information you are interested in. Okay, so just for the uh, easy understanding, the pyrolysis system is a micro furnace okay, that is sitting on top of a GC. So today we will be talking more about uh, pyrolysis with GCMS. So that's why I have taken this as an example. So we have a pyrolysis system or the micro furnace that is sitting on top of a GC. So basically this is a thermal treatment process at the elevated temperature and the, the evolved gases will be transferred to a GC column for separation. Then it is connected to a detector like MS where you can collect the information of different compounds. This is what basically the PY system is. So here this graph will tell you the process or the workflow. So we have a sample as a solid sample. You can transfer a small amount of the sample into a sample cup. Then the sample cup can be transferred to the PY system. Then when you start the analysis, so initially when you transfer, this cup will be standing in the cold zone. So when you start the analysis, the cups get dropped into the heating zone or the hot zone. So during this process, because this furnace is set at high temperature, so this material can decompose and there will be some gases evolved. Okay? So it can be additive, it can be polymer. Then with the help of the carrier gas, this is moving, okay, transferred to the GC column. And this is where you are seeing the separation occurring. As a GC column is meant for separating uh, individual compounds from a mixer. Then basically you get the output like a chromatogram. We, in this case, we call it pyrogram. Okay. So this pyrogram has got multiple peaks and each peak represents one compound that is part of the, the, the main compound that you are analyzing. Here, this example is actually the analysis of phthalate in, in, in electronic material. Okay. So that is a requirement for phthalate screening in all uh, plastic material. So this application is just demonstrating or illustrating the analysis of phthalate in uh, PVC or plastic materials. So this slide, I think basically we can get the concept of this uh, uh, PYGCMS working principle. You have a sample that you transfer to a sample cup, then the sample cup you transfer to your furnace and which is already set at your desired temperature. Then when the compounds are released, they are transferred to the GC column for separation. Then you get the output, okay, chromatogram or pyrogram. That will give you the information what you are interested in. Okay, so in polymer or a material science application, people use a different type of uh, analytical equipment. Okay. So one is the most popular one is the TGA, thermogavimetric analysis. The thermogrammetric analysis provide you the kind of the temperature profile of the material based on the weight loss information. And enthalpy change is done by this DTA and DSC, basically the calorimetric analysis. And mechanical changes or mechanical strength is done by this TMA and dilutometry. And today we will be talking more on the evolved gases. The evolved gas 
can be done by PYGCMS or thermal desorption GCMS, UV with pyrolysis and GCMS and EGMS and PYGCMS. During today's session, we will be discussing on EGAMS and pyrolysis GCMS and thermal desorption. Okay. The UV application we will talk on another occasion. Okay, again, just going back to the fundamental, as I explained earlier about the pyrolysis. So when you take any organic material, so if you apply a heat energy in presence of air, then it tends to form the uh, carbon dioxide and, and water as a final product. So it's like a complete neutralization. But if you do the same in an inert atmosphere, then this bigger molecule like C4, break down into C1, C2, C3, and so forth, so on and so forth. So this is what basically we are trying to see. If you see the second example, that is a polyethylene, it is a, the higher molecular weight uh, polymer. So when you apply heat energy, this can break down into different compounds, starting from C1 up to Cx. So that is depending upon the length of polymer that you are analyzing. Okay. This is a typical pyrogram of a polyethylene when you do the uh, pyrolysis GCMS at 600 degree. So you can see almost like it has got uh, so many peaks and the method uh, capability or sensitivity can allow you to even measure C100, okay? That is something very difficult. So you have to go for the size exclusion chromatography, but which may not be required. You can easily do with this. Okay, so that is the, the feature of the PYGCMS. Okay. So when you get a when you analyze a different type of polymer, then your pyrogram is basically. Okay. So again, excuse me. I think somebody turned on their microphone so let's go that is actually uh, obtained for polyethylene so similarly we can see the peak pattern for different polymer as different one okay. that is what information you will get when you analyze your a polymer by uh, PYGCMS. so this information can be used to really analyze the unknown sample so that's how the benefit is so this each peak represent one compound. So you can even look at the individual compounds okay, based on the mass spectrum. And you can use NIST library, but you have to keep in mind that NIST library cannot provide the information for all polymers. It can be only for certain number of additives because the NIST library is built based on uh, compounds that are volatile because they're, they're source is normal uh, liquid injector okay so that's why it cannot really handle any of the solid material so the database does not have those material what we are discussing today and some of the additives also it can give you give you that uh, the decomposed product but it may not be able to tell what is the, the original or the parent compound so that's why you need to have an appropriate library also when you are dealing with a lot of unknown samples Okay, so the previous two slides, basically I was trying to show what type of output you will get when you do a solid analysis by PYGCMS. You get a chromatogram, okay, that is a pyrogram we call it. And this can be a kind of uh, different pattern for different polymer. So that information can be used when you do an unknown sample. Then the secondly, you also have the information coming from the mass spectrometer. So that information will be additionally used when you deal with some of the unknown analysis or reverse engineering application. Okay, now let us move on. Which are the area where the PYGCMS is finding a kind of application? So definitely the first one is coming from the identification of polymeric material. Okay, so that's so where if you have a unknown material and you want to know whether this is polypropylene or PVC or rubber synthetic rubber or natural rubber that can be easily identified. Then you can go further to do some structural characterization to analyze or determine the, the, the chain, the end chain compound, the functional group 
compound as well as the stereo regularity okay that means if you have a kind of some chemicals where you may expect some different isomers this can be actually uh, determined also with the pyg cms we have some application but today we may not be sharing so we hope to organize more webinars in coming months maybe some of the additional information you will pick up when you attend our future seminars okay so after this structural characterization you can also use it for a degradation of kinetics that can be the polymer degradation by thermal or like a catalytic or even the uv all would be possible hmm so now you have phone message put tell na phone panni this is not only used for qualitative qualitative analysis it can also be used for quantitative analysis super so we have like some examples like thalate screening that we need to do some kind of semi quantitative analysis but there are some application where you can also do uh, uh, um, real uh, the quantitation at very low Hello. okay so i just have to small still somebody is not muted so let me try okay so sorry for the interruption so this slide basically tell you what are the uh, different application that is uh, possible with the pyg cms analysis so just to wrap up this slide so we can do unknown sample for identification of polymer or rubber or mixed polymer then it can also be used for structural characterization then the degradation uh, uh, mechanism or the kinetics of the polymer based on the thermal or uh, catalytic or even the uv radiation okay. so it can be used for qualitative and quantitative analysis how it actually complement our our uh, chromatographic application as you know the 85% of the samples of soluble substances where people try to analyze by lcms and gcms also play a role and some samples when they are volatile that can be analyzed directly so some of them you have to do a derivatization but by the addition of pyg cms into the kind of portfolio then you can say you can analyze all type of samples with chromatographic application that means uh, either you use it lcms or you use it gcms okay so it get actually that the py uh, accessory is trying to filling the gap in this chromatographic application platform okay so now we move on to the next okay, as i said mainly the py gcms is used for material analysis the car can be a very good example to see which are the different type of uh, materials that can be analyzed by py gcms so here you can see the tire so most of the tire manufacturing company they have our system and inside the seats they are made of foam so it is polyurethane or any other that can be analyzed then the brake phenolic resin material then the engine oil coating paint coating dashboard and sealing material so and you can see car is manufactured just by assembling only that means all these materials are manufactured by a different vendors so these vendors require to have a py gcms to really validate their product uh, characteristic sometime it is also used in most of the car manufacturing company as a qc for incoming materials so apart from the material analysis like polymer for quality control it is also seen some application in other fields okay for example if you are talking about differentiating uh, recycle polymer versus the synthetic polymer it would be possible then in organic chemistry or soil chemistry applications 
people are talking about the shale oil characterization or the some of the organic matter in soil and clinical science and forensic science and microbiology all this application because the PYGCMS can be uh, uh, done with a very little sample so that is an advantage in some of these uh, sectors clinical science you cannot afford to have a lot of sample same with the forensic science so we have some application for this uh, sectors as well and now the emerging uh, topic is actually microplastic in the environmental science so which is also uh, something we can do with the PYGCMS which we will share it in some other uh, session okay just to uh, consolidate the information that we have discussed so far okay the PYGCMS is used for uh, polymer uh, characterization where you are able to determine the type of polymer and also the type of additives but polymer will have inorganics which we are not able to like analyze with this PYGCMS you have to go for some other techniques like XDAR or XRB a different application or different techniques so the PYGCMS will help you to detect or determine the additives and polymer in your material okay now we move on to the features or the method mapping for different application you have to take different routes if it is a normal uh, qc analysis and where your objective is only to detect a polymer type okay, or the presence of a monomer of a specific polymer then a flash analysis a single shot may be enough but if you are doing some unknown sample analysis or a reverse engineering or failure analysis type of sample then you have to collect information as much as possible. So this is where you have to think a systematic approach to really answer the question of okay, the customer will have it. Okay, so we always start with the first one is called uh, EGA, world gas analysis. This is nothing but uh, like uh, a TGA. I will talk about it later. So based on this information, then we decide whether this sample has to be analyzed by a single shot or a double shot like thermal desorption and pyrolysis or hot cut. So where you can do a multiple chromatogram of your same sample. And we also can do a kind of in situ reactive pyrolysis because some of the condensed polymer that a normal flash pyrolysis will not give a, a good uh, signal. It can be a very... Uh, uh, complex chromatogram to get a very distinct chromatogram the reactive pyrolysis can be a good choice so which we will explain it also later okay so how we do a systematic uh, approach is we have a sample sample preparation is straightforward so you start with the EGA so I will explain what EGA is then based on the information you can decide whether you just want to do a single shot or double shot or hot cut so in all these different approaches you will have a lot of information from your chromatogram okay then a lot of mass spectra but to really do the data interpretation you need a library so it can be in some cases nest library but for polymers definitely you have to go for this uh, uh, special uh, library that frontier laboratory has so that can help you to really handle a different type of complex samples. Okay, this is just to show that the, the sample uh, preparation, which is straightforward. You just have to have appropriate tool for the sample to cut or slice, or even like if it is a liquid, you can use a micro syringe. Then you transfer it to the sample cup then transfer the sample cup to the UI system so that is what exactly it's happening so now let us start with the EGA as I said EGA is evolved gas analysis okay in this slide on the left side we have a TGA TGA I think most of you may be familiar with so basically you take a sample of like 5 to 20 milligram of sample then you apply heat so with the raise of temperature, you see a loss of, uh, because so, so the, due to the, the volatility, you see there's a weight a loss. So this information is collected with the micro balance. Then this data is treated further to get a kind of this differential thermogrammetric curve. So this is what 
the user is interested in. So that means they want to know what is the peak top temperature for additive and uh, polymer. Okay, this is what a TGA is giving. On the other hand, if you do same analysis, okay, with the uh, uh, EGA. Okay, so in EGA you have a PY system sitting on top of GC, and you don't have the analytical column. Okay, this is just like a transfer line only. So you raise the temperature in the furnace and there is some gases being evolved and that are being transferred to the mass spectrometer directly and that will produce some signal. So based on the intensity, based on which you are seeing a kind of two peaks. So the smaller one always because in any of the polymer, the concentration of additives are always less or smaller. So you always get a smaller peak for the additive region. And the next one is the, the polymer. So you can see this EGA thermogram is almost similar to the differential thermogrammetric data. So it can tell you what is the peak top temperature for the additive and polymer. But in addition, if you click on the peak, then you will get a lot of uh, information from the mass spectra. This information cannot be obtained by a TGA. That's how people are now looking for TGA and TGMS to really publish their work because just a TGA data alone cannot justify a publication. So in our case, you don't have to do this TGA and TGMS. EGMS can provide that information in, in one shot. And because we have another advantage and your sample requirement, okay, in the case of TGA, you have to take a larger sample, which is a limiting factor in the, 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 the conductance of the, the, the phase change and, and, and the kind of the decomposition. So here we can handle a smaller size of sample. So we have a data that shows how the peak top temperature of different material is varied between EGA, MS versus the TGA. And this is explained also. So, but today I cannot talk about it much. At least I can tell you, one is the sensitivity advantage and also sometimes the information what you are getting from TGA cannot be 100% accurate because of the limiting factor on the sample size. Okay, so once you have the EGA data, then you know what is the next step that is single shot or double shot or hot cut. So that means you have to change column, okay? For EGA, you don't have uh, analytical column. This is just a transfer line. But if you want to do single shot, double shot or hot cut, then you need to have a GC column. So the changing column is, some, is something that the user may worry about. So we have an accessory called vent free adapter. So this vent free adapter allows you to change column easily without disturbing your MS system. So that means your downtime is not long here. So that means in few minutes time, you can start it. So that is what this slide basically trying to tell. So you have the EGA, then when you want to do a single shot or double shot, or hot cut, then you just change the column, then you can go for it. Okay, that is what this. So this slide basically just tell you about the accessory that will be very handy when you are changing column in between the analysis. So now let us look into the EGA data and how we can decide upon the EGA data to go to the next step. Okay, so here an example. This is actually the uh, analysis of an eyeliner. Okay, it's a cosmetic. So eyeliner, as you know, it, it has moisture agent, some solvents, also some polymer, or soluble polymer. So when you do the EGA of this uh, sample, for example, here we are talking about a cosmetic eyeliner. So we get this EGA, okay, the thermogram, which tells you how many peaks. And any peaks that are appearing in this lower temperature region can be due to solvent, moisture agent or some other additives. So anything at high temperature can be due to the polymer. So what information you are getting from EGA thermogram is how many peaks and what is the temperature for each peak. So this is the information you are getting. Further, if you click on this peak, then you get a bunch of uh, mass spectra. With the help of our library, we can also get some additional information. But this is only the preliminary information you are collecting to decide your next step so you cannot complete the analysis with just ega so that's the point that i have to make it clear but this is important also because even to 
decide what is the temperature to be set for single shot analysis one need to know that unless otherwise you are not really looking for critical information usually for single shot analysis our rule of thumb is 550 so without looking at the sample you can do it but in some cases even 400 may be enough in some cases you may have to go 600 so that information you can obtain only if you do the ega okay so that's the importance of ega to get the peak top temperature of a polymer or a tube. when you are doing unknown sample it will tell you how complex the sample is because when you have multiple peak and the peak if they are coming together then you can see a lot of challenges in analyzing such samples in the single shot analysis okay so you have the ega data that tells you how many peaks and what temperature then you decide what you want to do okay as i said you can always do a single shot at 550 so 550 is a kind of our rule of thumb recommended temperature but the problem can be you have a chromatogram that has solvent additives polymer together and sometimes okay that the sensitivity can be a problem coelution or peak merging all this can be a problem so if you are really interested to collect more information single shot is not the ideal approach you have to go for double shot or a hot cut method okay so single shot output is something like this and you can have all compounds information in one chromatogram so when you do a double shot so double shot is most kind of common uh, approach that people take it the first step is thermal desorption you have a sample you start from 40 degree okay in this case up to 310 so this when you do the heating whatever the compound that are released from the material are transferred to the column then you start the analysis then you get the chromatogram and you can have all the same sample is introduced to the high temperature okay 550 in this case then you get another chromatogram that is the pyrogram okay so this is what most commonly people do it so you can get additives and uh, solvents information from the first step analysis then you move on to the uh, second step for the polymer information okay so somebody say lock committee somebody lock Okay, so in some cases even a double shot is not sufficient also you may have to go for hard cut analysis so how do you decide this okay so when you see the ega thermogram you have a multiple peaks and you want to know the details of this zone that means you have to do the chromatogram of this zone same for this zone and so on and so forth so here you can see you can do one sample in five steps okay step one is like you heat from 40 degree to 120 degree then whatever the compounds are released that will be transferred then you start the gc run so during this time the sample will be lifted up so it will not be in the furnace that's also important so then you again drop the cup then you start from 120 to 220 so it goes on this way okay so you can do five different analysis of a same sample and you will have more details compared to a double shot approach and particularly it is important if you are looking for some specific uh, needs so later i have application to show why you need to have a hard cut analysis okay so so far i have talked about a method mapping so method mapping means how to decide your method okay. you start with the ega evolved gas analysis so that will provide you the information on temperature for additives and polymer and it will also give the information how many peaks and what temperatures so based on that you can decide you want to do single shot or do you want to do double shot or hot cut because this choice is depending upon the objective or the interest of the analysis because if you are not interested in certain information then it is not definitely required to go for hard cut okay so as i said most common approach people go for double shot so that means all solvents moisturing agent and additives can be analyzed in the first stage then the pyrolysis for the polymer so this is what a common approach but for some reverse engineering or failure analysis you have to go for this hard cut later i will show. 
explain that. So once you have this set of data, then the next challenge is the data interpretation. So you have two options, okay? You can use the NIST library, then also use our Pyrolysis GCMS data book. That means we have a data for almost 1000 over polymers, which you can use it to verify your data. And with the help of NIST library and this book, you may be able to do the peak identification and compound identification. This is one approach. The another approach for the most uh, uh, preferred choice could be consider our F-Search library. The F-Search library is unique in the sense you have the data being like analyzed by four different ways. We have a separate database for the EGA. That means during the EGA stage itself, you can tell what type of polymer your sample has. Then when you go to the level short, you will have more details. So during the first stage, you use the additive library to look at all your moisturizing agent or the additives or even the uh, solvents, it's information. When you do the pyrolysis, okay, so you have the pyrolysate. Pyrolysate basically the single peak of, of a polymer. That means it may have multiple peaks. So each peak is considered as, as defined or as a, uh, pyrolysis. So you can analyze each peak individually and gather this information. You can also combine these peaks, okay, through the summation. Then use that information to through another algorithm. So you have same data being analyzed by two different approaches. So by doing this, you can increase your confidence level in data analysis and interpretation. So you have to consider F search if you are really uh, doing some unknown sample or reverse engineering or failure analysis. Okay, so let me just do a small uh, thing. So now I just want to share a couple of uh, application to show in which situation you are okay to do a single shot and which situation you require to do the double shot. Okay. The first example is actually the analysis of unknown resin. Okay. This is in a paint industry for the coating. So this customer is interested only to know the type of polymer present in this resin. That means he is not interested in the additives information. Then this is very clear. You can just do the analysis by a single shot. So when you do the single shot, you get the monomer for different type of polymers. In this case, this sample has the three different type of polymers. So PMMA, PHEMA, and PS, the polystyrene. Okay. So we get the monomer information for each type of polymer. So and with the help of our F search, this information can be easily obtained. So this is a single shot. So where your analysis objective is very straightforward and simple. Okay. You just want to know the type of polymer. So that means you only have to have the monomer information that is doable with a single shot analysis. The second example is actually unknown uh, black rubber sample. In this case, the rubber is coming from a competitor. Okay. Industry or the competitors so that they want to know what type of uh, plasticizer they are using what type of uh, antioxidant or vulcanizing agent okay all this information can be obtained only with the thermal desorption approach so that means you have to go for double shot so we have done a double shot for this type of analysis first you start with the thermal desorption from 100 degree to 320 degree and you have a lot of these peaks and with the help of mass spectrum uh, and the F search, you can identify all these compounds. Okay, this is what the customer is interested. Then second step, you do the pyrolysis. So at the uh, pyrolysis temperature, which you can get it from the, the EGA data, then you get the information of polymers. In this case, the polymer is just a single polymer, isoprene. Okay, so isoprene is the polymer, and it has a lot of uh, additives that is like antioxidant, vulcanizing agent, plasticizer, lubricant. So when you have this type of sample, single shot is not sufficient. 
you have to go for a double shot at least okay so these are the two uh, simple application that i have shared now i just want to move on to the uh, third uh, session so where we will talk about the failure analysis and reverse engineering failure analysis is, uh, by definition it can be many things okay when you have a product fail when you have a process fail so you can do a different type of uh, uh, approach to find out what is the problem so here we have an example to show how pyrolysis gcms can be a kind of tool to be used to address this problem okay so we had this uh, customer uh, coming to us saying that they have a product issue that the final product uh, did not pass their qc because of the turbidity and they are not sure the problem about the problem okay so we found okay py gcms means you just take the sample directly if it is nmr and ir that you have to do a lot of pre-treatment so that's how the, even the customer would have thought and they come to us directly okay so in this case first we tried a single shot analysis so they have given their standard sample and also the, the failed batch so we have done a single shot and single shot information is more or less same for both so then we will say we don't find any difference that means the problem is not addressed okay you still have the problem because they want to know what is the reason for the turbidity so that we know single shot is not sufficient then as our systematic approach starts with the ega we have done the ega analysis for this sample for the good one and bad one and you can see there is a small difference between the two okay particularly and even the mass spectrum also you have a lot of information but as i said before just by looking at ega data one cannot decide about the sample you can only see is there any difference and that will allow you to decide your next step so in this case what we found there is a, a distinct difference in this peak zone okay like 460 to 540 between the standard and the turbidity one so we wanted to try the hard cut method okay that is what has been done so hard cut method just for the benefit of certain audience it's more like a gc gc approach okay you separate something by by a first column then you introduce that peak into a second column for further separation so similarly here the first stage we are using the temperature okay the first level of separation is occurring based on the temperature then this particular zone we are trying to transfer to the gc column for detailed separation analysis okay that is what the hard cut method is to do this we need a couple of accessory one is the selective sampler because in normal case when you have a sample into the furnace you have a helium gas coming from the top anything you do here the sample is the, the gases are always transferred to the gc okay then you are not able to separate anything from these steps that's why we need to have this selective sampler that will have an additional uh, uh, gas flow so which will be used to ensure that the sample does not introduce anything when you are doing the analysis of the first stage so in the system configuration you have to consider selective sampler and also the second one is we have this uh, microjet cryo trap the cryo trap will help you to really capture the very very volatile compounds like c2 or c1 because the cryo trap allows you to cool down the column to minus 190 okay so these two accessories are critical for hot cut analysis okay the hot cut analysis when you look at the the total and chromatogram and also the two dimensional chromatogram of certain specific ions we found one particular ion 57 is found in uh, the, the bad material compared to the uh, the other one okay so that means so far what we found is there is some difference and we were not sure what this difference is now we got some more information is 57 so then 
when we did the extracted chromatogram for filter 7, we could see that we have this uh, saturated hydrocarbons that were detected in the turbid polyvinyl alcohol and which was not found in standard PVA. So that means at least we know the reason why this is turbid. So we have some compound that is present in the failed batch which is not seen in the standard PVA polyvinyl alcohol. Now the question comes, where is this coming from? So then we went back to the customer and they were using same facility for a different type of uh, production. So after making a batch of this uh, eth ethylene vinyl acetate copolymer, they did not do a proper uh, cleaning before they start the next batch of polyvinyl alcohol. So that was the problem. So they know they have to bring in or implement some QC system for cleaning the equipment before they do the production of different compounds. So then their question is, okay, at what concentration it is causing the turbidity? So they wanted us to look into the quantification parts. So we have done this and we found, okay, at 1000 ppm is where you are seeing the, uh, the, the turbidity problem. So we have done some analysis for this just to show that different concentration can be analyzed. Also, the reproducibility is good. So these are the two uh, critical uh, uh, information you require when you are doing some unknown analysis. So the reproducibility, also the, the kind of the a peak response for a, a different compound, the, the linearity. So that has been confirmed by this case. So this failure analysis project was a successful one where we were able to tell the customer the cause of this failure. And secondly, we also recommended a method which they can use it as a QC for newer batches. Okay, that means whenever they do the washing, they have to ensure that the PVA in the wash solution should not be more than 1000 ppm. So that's what the, the findings out of this failure analysis. So likewise, we have a lot of uh, failure analysis application. So just to give some idea, we have put up this as a kind of uh, requirement. All right. Now we move on to the kind of last uh, application that is on reverse engineering. Reverse engineering, okay, is part of the product development when you are trying to uh, uh, develop a product that can be superior than your competitor. Okay, then you try to get the best product available in the market. Then you do the real uh, kind of post-mortem of this material. Then get the information as much as you require. Mm -hmm. Then use that to develop your new material. So here, how a PYGCMS is used for reverse engineering application. Here, the example is uh, automatic coating, okay? So the automatic coating generally has got a glass one, polymer one, and wax one, okay? So here we are talking about the polymer one. The polymer, you have like silicon resin, acrylic resin, and fluorescent resin, and urethane resin. In today's application, we are going to show how a competitor product and their current product is different in terms of the Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to share this application just to show how you can compare your, your, your current product with the competitor product to improve your product quality. Okay, so we got this sample A and sample B. At least as an analyst, we do not know which one is good, which one is bad. So for us, it is like a two samples. So we take our systematic approach that starts with the EGA. Then you decide because they want as much as information possible. That means you have to do hard cut method in this case, okay? So first, let us start with the EGA. That is what we have done. So EGA, you can see there are multiple peaks. Okay, at least we can see the zone like A1, A2, A3, A4, and at least we can see four zones. And same is seen for other cases also. And the information what you see here, almost they are same. Okay, but 
there is some difference in the peak intensity. Okay, one thing you have to keep in mind when you see this kind of difference, you have to ensure that your sample size is not different. Otherwise, the peak intensity difference could be because you have taken 0.1 milligram here and 0.2 milligram here. So you have to be consistent with your sample size whenever you do this kind of application. So you have to use the micro balance to really weigh your sample to ensure that the sample difference is not big. Because we are not going for detailed quantitative analysis, it's more like a qualitative uh, approach. That's why you have to make sure that you are not varying many parameters. So most importantly, the sample size. Okay, so assuming that this is we have taken same sample uh, mass for both case. So we can see some difference in the peak intensity in this case. Okay, we start with the hot cut because in this case, excuse me. So we have five zone, four zones, so we want to do one by one. So before going to the hot cut, we wanted to see like whether single shot can do anything. So definitely we know the answer is no. But still, we just wanted to keep it as a part of our, our, our illustration purpose. So that we have done, like as I said, we tried to take uh, same quantity, you know, like 0 0.103 and 0 0.104. And we can see the single shot data, almost they are same. Okay. We cannot find any, any difference. Even the peak height, they are not really different. So that means this is not sufficient. Now we move on to the hot cut. In hot cut, the first zone is A1. Okay, so when you do the A1, you can see both more or less same. You do not find any difference except some concentration different. Okay. Go to the second one, second zone that is A2. In this case, you have one compound that is found in sample A but not in sample B. Okay. Hold on. Sorry. So this is one extra information that you are getting here. BHT is found in sample B but not in sample A. And similarly, there are some unidentified peaks and which are different in terms of the peak intensity. Then we move on to zone three. In zone three, we find some a different compound. Okay. We have isobutanol found in sample A and we have one butanol found in sample B. Okay, that is another difference. Now we look into the last one, A4. So we did not find any, any, any difference in this zone. So when you compare or consolidate these all four zones, one important information is the concentration difference. So that means this customer to complete their reverse engineering application, they have to go to the next level to get the calibration for these compounds. Okay, the BHT, MIBC, all these compounds, they have to establish a calibration and they have to quantify. Then because low and high is very difficult to make their judgment. So they have to really look at this, whether the low is PPM or percentage, the high is, is it percentage or PPM? So this information is required but for us at this moment we do not go to that level because we always start with the kind of qualitative approach first but the customer is interested to the next level then probably we will request the customer to procure these standards then we go for the calibration and quantification so that is also possible with this okay so that is a second application so now i would like to wrap up this uh, session so let me uh, take through the entire thing that what we have discussed we started off with a, a brief introduction on the pyrolysis as a process which is a thermal cracking okay to break the bigger molecule into smaller molecule and this is done at higher temperature in the absence of oxygen and you can also get this pyrolysis pro products improved if you do a catalytic pyrolysis Okay, so that is also part of the pyrolysis and we have a reactor that can be really uh, used for those uh, catalytic or pyrolysis process optimization. 
So after that, we looked into the analytical pyrolysis uh, approach. So basically, you are using pyrolysis as a process to treat your sample, and anything released from the sample is transferred to the GC, and which can be used to analyze the, 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 the nature of these gases that is released from the material. So that's why the combination is like a in situ, you know, you, you heat and anything comes out, you are measuring or you are analyzing. So that's why it is considered a kind of uh, uh, analytical. Okay? You are analyzing or monitoring while doing something. So the analytical pyrolysis concept is like you are collecting, like it's a hyphenating pyrolysis pyrolysis system with the analytical equipment like FTIR or mass spectrometer or uh, uh, GCMS. Okay, then once you have this PYGCMS, your analytical approach is depending upon what you want to do. That's why we talked about the method mapping. So at least people should remember these four different methods, EGA, then single shot, a double shot and hard cut. EGA is something similar to TGA data. It gives the peak top temperature for the additive and polymer, but you have more information because the output is based on mass spectrometer. So you have a lot of information about the chemicals that is really released during this EGA analysis. So then we decide based on the EGA data and customer interest whether single shorted is enough. Single shot always, if you are interested only in the polymer side, single shot is enough. But some like failure analysis where the PVA polyvinyl alcohol is a polymer and here they are trying to look for a difference then you have to go for hot cut okay then double shot generally a common uh, approach to analyze the additive separately and polymer and hot cut is like reverse engineering or unknown sample analysis or failure analysis so that's what the hot cut so all these can really put together as a kind of powerful tool for material characterization and also kind of like adding value to the chromatographic application or the portfolio. Okay, now I can take questions. So you people can uh, type in your question to the chat box and I will try to answer one by one. Okay, let me go through. Okay, the first question I received from uh, Mr. Badbanavan, I think, uh, is it possible to uh, repeat uh, without repeating the measurement between uh, single shot and double shot? Because actually the single shot and double shot, basically you are talking about two different analysis. But the single shot, one time you put it into the furnace, then it is totally gone. You cannot use that sample for uh, any more. So you have to prepare fresh sample for the double shot. And double shot, generally you can use the same sample without repeating the measurement, that's all. So I'm not sure whether I answer your question correctly. So the sample for single shot and double shot are different. But within double shot, you are doing two, two analysis that is done with the same sample. So please let me know whether I answer your question correctly. The second one is again talking about the TGA. Okay, currently we do not have that the TGA and our because TGA and our pyrolyzer cannot be coupled because TGA also almost like a pyrolyzer, you know. The only thing is they have the furnace and uh, microbalance. So so that means they don't need another furnace. But as I said because in that case, their sample size is because their detection method is a mass. That's why they have to take a sufficient amount. And the thermal conductance is a limiting factor of the mass. So when you take larger sample, you always find the temperature difference of five to 10. We have done this for 20 over polymers. So to answer your question on this, uh, this coupling is not possible and not required. Okay. Uh, because the TG also a uh, furnace only. So can we say EGA and single shot are same? No. EGA is evolved gas analysis. Evolved gas analysis is you are seeing the compounds that are released when you are raising the temperature of the sample. Okay, you, you take a sample, solid sample, then you heat it, 
from 40 degree to 700 degree but it is not a quick ramp up you are doing it 20 degree per minute so when it reaches 100 degree it may release some compounds that is what transferred to the ega column and detector then when you hit it further to 200 degree some compounds are released so you are getting the compounds as you progress with the temperature as the temperature raises in single shot you have the furnace already preset at 550 the temperature is already 550 you drop the sample then it is like a flash pyrolysis and that is different okay in single shot we are not using a gc column uh, sorry the single shot we are using gc column for the ega we are not using a gc column okay that's the question how to check the ua column is working uh, fine in terms of in good condition okay good condition generally we have a kind of a, a performance uh, verification with the polystyrene so usually there are three things you can see to check your column performance first of all the background okay then are you able to reproduce your analysis then the sensitivity so these three things if you are able to verify you can take any any type of uh, sample or standard like usually we, we recommend polystyrene so you can try this then you can tell your, your column is usually if your background is going up it can be either due to column or your ion source so if you are able to make sure that ion source is clean already then it can be coming from the column the column bleeding you know then you can you can think of uh, verifying the column performance by taking some standards like polystyrene in case single shot exercise how to predict tire sample composition okay in single shot tire sample analysis is straightforward because you may be interested only in the the, the, the kind of uh, the, the polymer unless you are looking for complete information then single shot may not be sufficient you have to go for double shot because in the tire sample you may have some vulcanizing agents you may have some antioxidant you may have plasticizer all this in single shot also may come but the sensitivity because of the overlapping and other issues you may miss some compounds okay that's why we recommend a double shot otherwise single shot can help but ideally speaking you should consider a double shot for this okay can you please brief about analytical catalytic biomass paralysis in specific how precise the analysis how many repetitions of sample needed okay so th this is actually a, a topic of discussion uh, by itself so i won't be able to give a lot of uh, details here but to, to answer your question yes this is very precise and you can do the analysis okay the catalytic uh, biospirolysis and you can monitor the online monitoring is possible and you can also do the stepwise analysis of the same material so definitely we will organize a separate seminar for this single and tandem reactor for biomass research and catalytics, the catalytic pyrolysis uh, processes. Okay, we will do that. But to answer your question, yes, the analysis are very precise. We have data to show that it is a reproduce, highly reproducible. Yeah, and the sample size is always because that's uh, one key benefit. We can always handle very small sample of uh, the small sample size because our output is collected through a uh, ms so it is uh, good uh, sensitive enough to capture the information so sample size is small so that means even you save uh, cost on the chemicals then in terms of the reproducibility we guarantee you know less than like five percent for most of our analysis so it is reproducible generally to verify your uh, reproducibility you have to run three three analysis In pyrolysis, original molecule is breakdown. Then, how to derive the original molecule structure by analysis? That's a good question. That's why, as we said, we have to consider our F search because in F search database, we take the original polymer and we break down through pyrolysis and characterize this, and we have that fingerprint and we use that as a database. That's why you are able to link the decomposed products to the original uh, larger molecule 
and which is not possible in NIST library because NIST library is built based on chemicals which are volatile, you know, okay, at uh, 300 degree and below. That's why NIST library cannot produce this information. It may tell some of the breakdown compound, but it cannot tell whether this is coming from polymer A or polymer because some of the decomposed product is common for both type of polymer. That's why we have to have more uh, kind of uh, information before you decide whether this is polymer A or polymer B. And so we have this iron ratio, then uh, chromatogram comparison, and also uh, because our, our algorithm use uh, multiple information. So the answer to your question is yes, we are able to collect because our database is built based on original polymer. Okay, so that's uh, one question. What will happen to chemicals released in between the desorption and pyrolysis? Okay, that's a good question because uh, I'm not sure whether I, I got your question correctly. Okay, the, the thermal desorption, right? So you take a sample, you put it to the furnace and you are heating from 40 degree to 200 degree, let's say. Okay, during this is what we call it desorption. So any chemical that is attached or like volatile within the material, they are being released. Okay. So after this, what we do is we lift it. That means the sample is not in the furnace anymore. It is on the top, like a cold zone, we call it. So the sample is not exposed to any further heat. That's why we don't expect any interference. And when it is introduced for uh, pyrolysis, we really uh, like raise the temperature first, then you drop, then you start the analysis. For flash pyrolysis, your whole time is one minute. Okay, that means your temperature is already preset. Okay, that is what. Okay, the, what will happen? Okay, that's, I, I hope I have answered. Uh, how to, uh, like, how single shot help us to characterize the rubber vulcanize? I think this was a repeat of a previous question. As I said, because single shot can provide all information uh, together, okay? That means uh, vulcanizing agent, because additives and uh, polymer information will come together. But a possible uh, challenge could be sometime the co-illusion of merging peaks. That's why the quantities may be a challenge. Otherwise, single shot is good to get the information, but it depends to what extent you are interested. So I'm just repeating this again. Ideal situation, one should consider double shot for this kind of analysis. Okay, sometimes peak is not detected. Can you please tell me what is exactly the reason? Okay, this is a good question. Okay, uh, this, it could be because of some leakage, you know. That's why we always tell, you have to check your your, your, your uh, GC side, the pressure and all, you know, your, your pressure, back pressure and all, if it is normal or it is increased or it is less, then it will, it will. and you have to like, even check the leak also just by increasing your back pressure, you know, that it's really able to keep up or it's releasing. So most possible reason could be a leak. Okay, otherwise you have to verify the system performance with the uh, polystyrene type of standard. Can you please tell me why cup stuck in PY? And what are the basic reason for this? Okay, so if I understand your question correctly, this could be a problem that you are seeing it in uh, auto shot, right? Auto shot actually, when it try to recover the cup, it is using the compressed gas. So, and also it has a couple of valves. So these valves sometimes can malfunction. So that's a basic reason. Yeah. So we have to actually you have to talk to us separately to find out more uh, about this problem. But generally what we have seen is this problem could be because of the compressed air flow or the malfunctioning of the valves.
Okay, EGA or pyrolysis is same as both are evolved gas analysis and what is the difference? Okay, the EGA and pyrolysis, they are different. The reason is in EGA, you are raising the temperature stepwise, okay, the ramp. That means the pyrolysis is different. Pyrolysis is a flash pyrolysis where you are exposing the sample to the high temperature in no time. Okay. And here you are raising the temperature slowly. So that is a difference between the two. So they are not same. And second is in EGA, you are not using uh, analytical column. For pyrolysis, you are using analytical column. Can we check the plastic pyro oil in PY? GCMS. Actually, the if you want to the the plus the oil analysis is possible. Yes. Okay. And that's also possible for the different type of uh, the the, uh, the low density or high density polyethylene. Uh, can we check? Excuse me. Sorry, there are some uh, noise in our side. Okay, the pyro, the, the bio oil, the, the oil sample can be analyzed, but the difference can be found. But I do not have the uh, direct uh, like answer for this. Okay, so what is the problem or what difference you will find it? So I have to look back. But this would be possible. Without liquid nitrogen, uh, can we perform this game? Yeah, so they are doing some maintenance work. Sorry about that. Can we perform hot cut analysis? Is there any way that analyze? Okay. If you are looking for the very volatile compounds information that you may miss that. Okay. So, but we have another uh, uh, economic uh, approach that is done with the thermal flask where you can put in some liquid nitrogen. Manually you can introduce or expose your column front end to the liquid nitrogen. So that is a, a, a economic approach, but a lot of manual work uh, involved in this okay if you don't use it you may miss some of the very volatile compounds information that's a uh, main problem okay so i hope i answered your questions so the answer is in, in two way you can consider a simple one a normal thermal flask filled with a liquid nitrogen and you introduce the the front end of the column so that is almost equivalent to this cryo trap if you don't use that, you may miss some of the very volatile compounds. So if you are not interested like C9 and below, then you don't have to. Do cryo system need liquid nitrogen only or can it work with liquid carbon dioxide? Uh, this is a very good question. I have to talk to our, our R&D department on that. Currently, we are only using liquid nitrogen. So we will talk about it. Okay. So. Can we do single shot in double shot pyrolyzer? Yes, we can do. Because uh, you are presetting the temperature and you put the source like a flash pyrolysis, you can do both. Okay, a few more questions. Uh, can we? By decreasing pyro temperature, can we map rubber additives in tire sample? Okay, so if you are talking about using uh, single shot analyzer for this application, you can try, but you have to keep in mind that you cannot do a ramp up uh, heating program in, in single shot. It's always one step uh, heating only, it's like isothermal. 
So you can try the sample at 100, you can try the sample at 200, you can try the sample at 300 and 400. Then you get this information four times and consolidate. On the other hand, if you use a, a multi-shot, then you can straight away do 100 to 300 ramp up. So you get all these four analysis data in one run. So that's a, so to answer your question, it is possible, but still it cannot be 100% uh, correct approach. And single shot by decreasing, okay, I told this. Okay, I think it's the same question repeated a few times. Can I put ligure uh, rubber extracted sample into single shot? Can I put liquid uh, rubber? Yeah, it is possible, yes, because as I said, you can do single shot at any temperature, but it is not a progressive heating. But you, you can get the data, and sometimes you may not be able to see a proper separation of the compounds. So that's a limitation. How to increase the reliability of PY spares like uh, quartz tube, etc. Okay, this is actually uh, we have to have a separate session for some of our existing existing customers because we may help you to optimize your user uh, the, the best practices. Okay, sometimes if you are using very uh, large sample and higher temperature than what you require, so these are all possible reasons and sometimes the septa you know you are using the wrong septa all, all this could be a reason for these uh, frequent uh, consumable changes so i think uh, you please uh, raise your questions separately to your like uh, your your like partner or like you can write to us then we will see we, we will try to address that separately and if possible we will do a user uh, session separately where all users can talk about their challenges and we may have some answers for their problem. Okay. The next question, what is the process of cleaning? Okay. Spare of any permanent solution for red septum that means we frequently need the red septum due to leakage problem. Okay. This is something uh, we have some recommendation for the septums. Maybe yeah, I think you can talk to your uh, supplier who may be able to help with this. So if you are using the right septum, you don't have to do that. Uh, you don't have to face such problem uh, regularly. So let us have your question emailed to us, then we can discuss this offline. Sometimes results are carry forward. That means reading of previous sample forward to the next one that is any solution for that okay and this one i am not sure because it could be most of the time that your column run is not long enough we are not sure that could be one or the temperature what you set may be not enough so that's why you have to give more information to answer this question generally what we tell if you are doing any sample at very low temperature okay then and once in few runs you know you have to raise the temperature to really clear up the column run some blank in between to ensure that your furnace is clean your column is clean all this okay so sometimes if, if your column run time is short then you you complete analysis before all compounds are eluted so that the remaining compounds can come to the next one but if you are seeing peak response for certain compounds are increasing in following runs so then it is a different problem so we always find the sample size could be one problem like or one reason for this okay so please check your sample size so if you are not taking larger sample this should not be a problem so we need to understand this carry up forward in what sense is it the same peak that it is increasing next time or you are seeing some extra peaks so then we have to give a suggestion accordingly Okay, what is the next question? If you continuously test for phthalate, then we go for 
uh, if we continuously test phthalate then we go for uh, what is that decades testing uh, leakage or uh, I'm not sure what is it that time we cannot get peak for deca okay deca okay for deca bromo I see, see, see. Okay, so this is nothing to do with uh, that. So I would say again, you have to share more details on the analytical conditions. So as it is, we don't find this the, any reason here, you know, because after you are doing, if you are switching over to Deca Bromo, generally there should not be any problem. Okay, unless you you have more uh, details, I cannot answer this question directly. How gain and area affect on peak? Yeah, actually, so if you are talking about uh, the GCMS performance, you have to set your GCMS performance first up to its best. So. After that, only you have to move to the PY parts. So that means once you are into a, your PY mode, a PY GCMS, you do not want to really touch on those gain aspect and other things unless you are looking for some compounds that are very trace. Okay, so that means you set your GCMS condition and performance to its best. Then in PY side, when you are coming and if you find some problem with the analytical response usually we recommend two things okay one is you reduce the split ratio and if you are looking for certain additives then you can raise the sample size these are the two things so we don't really touch it on the the detected performance so that means the detected performance should be set to its best before you start any of the py analysis but within PYGCMS, normally we play with two things. One is the split ratio, another one is the sample size. We have leakage problem. Often we check all possibilities of leakage, but they're not leak detected, then we clean injector through EGA software, then read, solve the EGA software, then problem solve. Uh, I did not get your question correctly, so maybe you have to explain what is this EGA software, I don't know. Maybe please uh, write to me or you can write to your, your like provider, service provider. Please conduct webinar again on oil pyrolysis. Yes, we will do that separately on oil pyrolysis and also the other things. Okay, sometime after pyrolysis process, some cup or not go into cup choke. They fail in PY cup. That's what I said. As I said earlier, because we have some mechanical malfunctioning uh, on and off. That would be because of the compressed air supply or the valve uh, system. So we have some uh, recommendation for this maintenance. Probably you should talk to your service engineer. And if you have frequent uh, problem on this, uh, you, you touch base with your supplier and, and, and connect with us. We can uh, we can get more information from our, our service director. Okay, yeah, so please send email to uh, uh, the, my email ID. Whoever is interested in uh, presentation slides, we will try to. Which assignment fragment confirm the presence of IAR rubber in flash paralysis? Probably I don't have information on my hand now. I have to go back to the library and provide this. Yeah. Yeah, because the PC, the, the PY data book also can help you to do this. Which method would be best for testing any kind of animal manual? I think we always start with uh, 
uh, EGA. The EGA is the one that tells you the type of compound that present. And if you are just interested in looking at the animal uh, manure, even uh, a single shot may be enough to provide all those information. But EGA then uh, double shot or single shot will be the best approach. Which assignment fragment confirm? I think the same question again. Conduct a webinar on F search for polymer interpretation. Okay, we will do that. And EGA software means uh, PY control software. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you for that. I think uh, I'm not sure. So this probably I will uh, refer this question to our service side and probably uh, please contact your supplier and all you, you can also write to me. Uh, then we will, we will we'll get more information for you. Why polymer region appears first in SS uh, pyrolyzate before the low in case of... Okay, this is actually uh, the retention uh, behavior of the compound. Okay, the, the breakdown compound of the polymer, because for example, styrene or like isoprene, you know, so they may come first. That is actually the nature of the column. So that has nothing to do with it because that, that's why if you are doing the double shot, then you don't have this problem because you are getting the information of all your uh, additives first, then pyrolysis for polymer. In single shot, this differences because of the retention of the different compound. Okay, please inform. Okay, as presentation file. Okay. Okay, I think uh, Mr. Rajesh has already shared my email. So please uh, write to me and you can copy your supplier over it is and then probably uh, we can, we can, we can. Okay, so thank you all and uh, I'm very sorry for some of the interruption that uh, uh, we had during the session. Probably uh, I have to upgrade my software also to manage this. I will do that. So, but definitely uh, we are very glad that we, we got very good uh, number of participants and a lot of uh, interaction also. That's important. So we will improve, uh, as I said, as part of our, our kind of uh, uh, vision also, we really want to work with the customers to achieve the customer satisfaction, to really improve our, our performance of our systems. And we always look for uh, 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 innovation, innovative technology also. That's why our R&D team is working hard. So definitely we are always open to get customers feedback to improve our system performance. So I thank you all again for joining today's webinar. I hope you find it a bit useful. And I guarantee that we will do a better job in next next session. So. Maybe uh, once I'm sure that I do not have other interruptions, uh, I can I can make it a little more with uh, uh, better clarity in terms of the sound and other percentage. Okay, but please uh, feel free to give your critical uh, comments on the content, also the, the audio quality and things like that. So don't be shy. We are open to uh, like listen to your critics. Thank you. Take care and this is a nice day. Have a nice day. So please write to me if you are interested to have the uh, 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 slides. Okay. And also, if I am not able to answer some of your question, let us connect offline to address that separately. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah.